Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will look at uh, support vector machines and introduction to support vector machines. Uh, all these slides were provided by Intel software. Uh, let us first look at the uh, relationship to logistic regression. So, let us consider this example where um, the um, where we are trying to determine whether a patient survived or he was lost based on the number of cancerous nodules found in the patients. Okay. Now, if you use logistic regression, then the idea is if the output of the logistic function is uh, greater than 0.5, then we uh, classify it as class 1 and if the output of the logistic function is less than 0.5, then we classify it as class class 0. Now, if, if you recall the logistic function, uh, if you if that happens when the argument to the logistic function is greater than 0, then we get uh, 0.5, the or 0.5 or above and uh, if the argument to the logistic function is less than 0, then we get a um, value uh, which is uh, less than 0.5, right. Remember because if take this function, then if the argument becomes 0, then it is 1 over 1 plus 1, which is half, that is like 0 0.5, right. If we have, uh, if the, um, <coughs> if this evaluates, let us say if the argument becomes, uh, then this is the number at which, point at which we are at draw the threshold, correct. So, for all arguments which have, which, which are greater than 0, the logistic function outputs point greater than 0 0.5 and all arguments less than 0, the output, the point is that uh, the logistic function outputs less than 0 0.5. So, we classify that as either class 1 or class 0. So, the idea behind uh, fitting to a logistic sigma is such that for all class 1s, the argument is much, much greater than 0 and for all class 0s, the argument is much, much less than 0, okay. So, that then uh, this function evaluates to some value much greater than 0 0.5 then we can with confidence say that it is class 1 or class 0, okay. The another way of looking at this problem is to look at the, uh, in, the in the case of SVM, it looks at it in terms of decision boundaries, right. So, the idea is, okay, let us say we draw a decision boundary here based on you have only one feature, we can just think of it like a threshold, we draw the decision boundary given by this particular line, okay. Then what happens? We have three misclassifications corresponding to these blue points are misclassified. So, then we can just try another addition boundary which is over here, right. Again, we have two misclassification corresponds to these two, two, two points right there. However, if we draw uh, this line is moved to some point in between these two, this one green, one blue and one red, then we have no misclassifications. However, there are multiple choices for this, right. We have an entire range for this and it is very difficult to determine where we can draw this, uh, where we can draw this line. So, the idea behind SVM is to figure out where to figure out where to draw this line. So, this is called the in 1D, so this is one straight line and of course, in 2D also we have a line, um, and more like a threshold in 1D and in 2D we have a line. In multiple dimensions, it, it, it is corresponds to a uh, separating hyperplane, okay. We will look at what these two dotted lines mean later on, but um, this width typically is known as the margin, that is where the um, let us see how the and SVM is referred to as a maximum margin classifier by maximizing that margin. So, we will see uh, that later on. However, the point behind the support vector machines is to figure out this uh, boundary, uh, this separating plane, line or boundary uh, between two classes. And one of the criteria here is that the two classes should not have any overlap. So, they should be linearly separable. So, that is a problem we will be considering, we will be looking at linear SVM. Okay, that is the idea behind. Um, so, that is the uh, first intro introductory topic to SVM. So, we will look at classes that can be linearly separated. Okay. So, ideally if we coming back to our 1D example, ideally this is a, this is a, you can, you can see that intuitively you can see that this is the ideal separating point, right. Because then we have some leeway here and here too and we also see that these two dotted lines, they correspond to the points on either classes. So, there is one in the red class, there is one in the blue class and these these two lines pass through those points which are closest to this boundary, okay. So, you can see that these dotted lines pass through the, pass are very nearby the red and this dotted line passes very near and nearby the blue dot, the blue dot and these two points are the closest to the uh, optimal boundary that we have drawn here, this is the optimal boundary, okay. So, then um, these points are referred to as support vectors. Okay. 
I will show why they are called support uh, vectors because we can just think of them as vectors in n dimension space that is all it is a point in n dimension space if your uh, data set is n dimensional. Okay. So, that is the uh, purpose we, uh, of the objective of a support vector machine to find out this optimum boundary with respect to the support vectors which are basically the closest points on, e on the of either class to this boundary that we are to the separating boundary that we are looking at okay, or the separating plane we are looking at. So, uh, we will consider slightly more complicated in the sense 2D that way we can actually illustrate it much better. So, we have two features number of malignant nodes cancerous nodes and the age of the patient and let us say we are just trying to predict survival. So, there are two types either lost and uh, the patient is lost or the patient survives which can be denoted by uh, uh, these two uh, red and the blue dots. And in the case of SVMs typically it is we will shift from 0 to 1, 0 1 classification to plus minus 1. Okay. So, um, in logistic regression we saw it is class 0 or 1, in SVMs it is typically referred to as um, the class labels are minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. So, then how do we draw this line like as we saw before for the 1D case we can just draw many such separating lines. So, as we go through we will see that each of them has a misclassification associated with it. So, the way to interpret this again one side of the line is class 1 the other side of the line is class minus 1. Okay. So, that is the uh, that is how we separate uh, determine the classes. Okay. So, this is a very nice um, separating boundary much closer, but you see it is also very sensitive. So, suppose we have a point red point here. Uh, it is kind of dubious like the sense which it is very difficult to figure out which class it belongs to. So, again the similar way this line is also not very uh, the most uh, the best line because again it is very sensitive to uh, small points very near that boundary. So, ideally so this is an excellent boundary right this is this is very nice because then it actually separates the two classes very clearly and then we have this margin right again once again if you look the margin that we talk about is the distance between these classes. Okay. as determined by points see, I'll draw long, determined by points which are closest to the separating line in this case or separating plane okay this is the optimal separating plane or separating line and these two lines are determined by the points that are closest to it okay so to once again to reiterate the the point behind uh, svm is to determine this line or plane in more than one dimension it is a plane and more than two dimensions it is a plane and the idea is to determine this separating hyperplane based on the support vectors. The support vectors are points on either classes plus and minus one classes that are closest to the uh, in terms of geometric distance they are closest to the plane to the separating hyperplane okay. and we use these two lines to uh, data, this is what we actually optimize for in the SVM algorithm that is we want to make sure that this distance is maximum. Okay. So, maximizing and this distance is referred to as margin. So, maximizing the margin so as to determine the optimal separating hyperplane. So, that is the idea behind the algorithm for support vector machine. Okay. So, how do we go about doing this? So, the idea is we did we um, which very similar um, uh, to what we did for logic logistic regression in terms of the model it is similar, but we will explicitly state the uh, intercept the bias term. Okay. So, this you can think of it as an equation of a line or a plane in 3D or a hyperplane in multiple dim more than 3 dimensions. So, we will call this as W transpose x then we have the bias term W transpose b equal to 0 okay. that is the equation of this line where the x's are your features and W is your weight vector or parameter vector. B is your bias term right. Okay. Now, what we do is we fix the dis distance between uh, this this line and the uh, and the support vectors. So, so based on the support vectors we we figure out these two the equation of these two line we call them W transpose x plus b equal to 1 and this line is W transpose um, x plus b equal to minus 1. Okay. So, let us put them at unit distance from the separating hyperplane. The idea is then what we talked about was that we want to maximize this margin. Okay. 
So, the maximizing this margin is then to figure out the distance from the optimal plane to let us say the closest support vector or you can think of some point on the plane to this line and some point on the, on this again this plane or line to this line here. So, that is a distance we the sum of these two distances is called the margin and that is what we want to maximize. So, what is the, how do you compute that distance then you uh, please look up um, you may be maybe from a high school please look up how to determine distance of a point to a line ok. So, if you consider a point from here to that line you can look it up ok and it will show that you will see that the total distance will come up to be 2 over minus of w ok. So, this is the margin ok. So, uh, you consider this so you consider a point on this line and you calculate the distance to this line and then consider a point on this line and calculate the distance to this line. We know the equations of those lines you can take any arbitrary point you will see that it can be done ok or the other way around also either way you should be able to calculate this distance to be 2 over modulus of w ok. So, to this is the margin and we want to maximize this margin. Remember in the process when you maximize the margin with respect to w then you will get the this value here ok. So, right now plus there is a constraint right. So, what have we done here we have drawn these these two supporting planes here such that they, 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 those lines are drawn by considering the points that are closest to the the optimal separating line or separating plane ok. So, then we are considering these points that is what we have used maybe we want this one to draw these lines these dotted lines ok. So, which means that everything so, there should be no points in between these two lines right. So, there should be no um, uh, data points lying in between these two all class 1 point should be on the other side of this line all class 0 minus 1 point should be on the other side of this line. So, that constraint is simply uh, that constraint is written as y times is greater than 1 ok where y is your ground truth label. So, the idea is when y is plus 1 you can think about it when y is plus 1 y equal to plus 1 then w transpose x plus b should evaluate to some number much greater than 1 hopefully and that means that if you multiply these two you will get a positive number greater than 1. Similarly, when y is minus 1 w transpose x plus b should evaluate to a number much less than uh, minus 1 and this again the product of these two will give you a number much greater than 1 ok. So, that is the point behind uh, having this constraint. So, maximizing this quantity subject to this constraint or you can minimize it's the same ok. So, this is the loss function for support vector machines ok. So, again to recap what we are trying to do is to we are, we are considering this uh, classification problem where the classes are linearly separable. So, that is an important constraint ok. So, we uh, the nonlinear case is hand handled by uh, something called the kernel trick ok, uh, but we but if time permits we will go there, but otherwise we, we will not consider it, but I am just stopped with linear SEM. So, we are only considering linearly separable classes ok. That means that we should be able to draw a line have a threshold or a separating hyperplane between the classes if you are kind of look, looking at more than 3 dimensions ok. And one of the things to consider is let us say if we have this let us say we have this um, a line in this case we will just consider 2D for as for our conversation here. Let us say we have this line we figured out this line what it means is that if you consider the distance from this line to the nearest points on either class ok. So, geometric distance between this line to the nearest points in either class that distance should be maximized ok and that is the objective of the SVM function ok. So, which may when we do that then we, we get this uh, um, we not only do you find out this hyperplane we also get the support I call them support planes because these are the points that are closest to the optimum decision boundary or called the support vectors ok. So, then if we go if we have these three lines then it means that anything on the other side of these support lines are belonging to a particular class. and actually there is no point in between them ok. In the, in the margin there are no 
points falling training data points falling in the margin ok. So, this is typically used for binary classification plus or minus 1 if you have multiple classes then you do one against the rest ok, but typically ICMs are used only for uh, uh, binary classification and the way to formulate this again like I said is to maximize the margin. So, that the idea and to do that is that you define these two supporting planes which pass through the support vectors by this equation W transpose I am sorry I have made a mistake here it is W transpose x plus b equal to 1 and W transpose x plus b equal to minus 1 basically you are putting them at kind of a unit distance if you are say and we find out the distance bet between these two lines in terms of W which turns out to be nothing but 2 over modulus of W this is coordinate geometry you should try it out and of course maximizing that would be same as minimizing. So, this is minimizing minimize this number half omega square w square subject to the constraint that there are no points in between the supporting planes ok and that constraint is met by this equation y times y is the ground truth y times w transpose x plus b should be greater than 1 ok. So, this is the uh, objective function for SVM again this is solved called a quadratic programming problem and it is solved using Lagrange multiplier techniques we do not have time to go in there um, because uh, because of that again we have to go through that derivation to figure out how in the end the form of that of cross function will be such that we should be able to handle even non-linear decision boundaries of course we I if time permits we will just look at it otherwise uh, we will defer it for a later class or maybe I will just post you some uh, resources to read from ok.